a few considerations on magic. When undergoing a magical operation, the magician gathers his magical tools. He banishes his space, he summons forth the energies he requires, whether internally or externally, to work with to accomplish certain ends. He speaks the magic words and then leaves the forces he has summoned to have agency to take up work within the realm of his choosing, whether that be the astral or the physical. Now, to win money via the magic of fantasy esports, get your computer and your browser, the magical tools you require, banish your space, navigate through the various contests, weeding out the ones you don't want and the games you don't want to play. Conjure up the names you want to represent you in the realm of this contest, in the particular game you've chosen. State your intent by entering the contest with said names representing you and await the alchemical product of Skrilla. Now the E-League, this little baby here, has now announced its full roster, its full lineup of teams for the first season. And there are 24 teams, I think. Yeah, I think it's 24 overall. And the league itself, uh, I think, let me think, was it 24? I think it was, yeah, okay. And the league starts on May 24th, but at the moment we don't have any actual public information on what the system will be. How will it run as a league? How will it run week to week? When will teams attend? Will they be there for many weeks? Will it be one or two weeks? Things I've heard is that teams will only be there for like one or two weeks at a time, then they'll go away and other teams will come in. With enough teams as there is now, 24, obviously you couldn't have them all at one place all playing all the time anyway. In theory, assuming we're not just going to fill all the days, it's only going to be broadcast a few days a week. So it will be interesting to see what is actually revealed on that and what ends up being the case. So, the thing is, the first six names for the league were actually already revealed by E-League. The problem is, actually seven had been revealed, if you think about it. So the first six, in fact, I'll bring them up on screen here. I have a screenshot of them. And I've, in fact, I have them all, but I'll, I'll talk about the first six initially. Okay. Here we go. All right, let's put this over here. And I'll make it bigger. And there we go. So... The first six was Astralis, NIP, Mouse Sports, Cloud9, Logic Gaming, and RNG Renegades. Now, when the first six were announced, I did a video about that. I'll link that up there. And I discussed what I thought of each of the teams being added, given evaluation, what I thought it meant for the league. And one of my concerns when the, the first six were announced was that we'd heard all these rumors and seen all these tweets from teams like Complexity, and then we'd heard later on about teams like Elko Fox and Energy, and then we knew Optic were already in from Winning Road to Vegas. And so it's, it was feeling like with the initial amount of teams, which was going to be something like 15, there's not much space for any good teams left. And usually, if you have teams like Fnatic, Na'Vi, Vertz Pro, you're going to lead with those massive names, you'd think, to set your league up. Now, what actually ended up being the case is, is that part of the reason this six were announced initially is these are the ones that are all signed, that they'd gotten the, the deals with in, in place early on, where some of the others, it was still being negotiated as to whether they'd sign. Now, you can see from the other names that we have here. So we have Fnatic, Natas, Fins oh, by the way, I've reordered these other other whatever it is, 18 names to be in the order that I think is like most significant. So we've got Fnatic, Na'Vi, Luminosity, Envious, Virtus Pro, Dignitas, FaZe, Team Liquid, Tyloo, Gambit, G2, Games 2, Flipside, F3, SK Gaming, NRG, Echo Fox, Complexity, Team Solo Mid, TSM, and Optic Gaming. Now of these other names, you can see that basically they got everyone. I, I mentioned the point before that it's a big deal. Okay, so we'll go through the first six and, and see what we think now in the overall scope of things. So Astralis, you've obviously got to have them there. They are perennial top four team in the world and they have the potential at all times to do something like they did at the Major and thrash off a team like Fnatic. So they're a very good team. And obviously they're a side that in a league format and in online formats have been very, very successful. So it's a great, that's a great addition to have. You'd certainly want them in a league that has 24 teams. NIP, now at the time... We didn't really know that much about NIP when this was initially announced, but obviously it's very exciting what they've done at Dream Act Malmo, so we can't wait to see them there now. And they would have been a top 10 team anyway, at least within the overall scope of where things will likely end up shaking out. Mouse Sports, okay, it was a bit more touch and go. They haven't really still shown any big time performances to me, but well, they have got Nico, who admittedly is probably the best player in the world right now, so it's great to see them there. Cloud9, yeah, I mean, that's, that ship's kind of sailed at the moment. They did so badly at the Major. All they've done, basically, is qualify for the Major. That's it. Nothing really, anything of significance beyond that. 
So you look at the equation and you have to say, especially now they're down to four players, yeah, not really that great team, but at least it is Cloud9, at least it is Skadoodle and Shroud, they're big names, you want to see them in NA, and obviously when you're making deals with big NA orgs, they're going to be one of the first ones you go to. CLG, likewise, I mean, CLG is a very stable team, for me they're a top 10 team, certainly, they're quite a good team overall, and for a league with anything more than about six names, you've got to have CLG in there, I think. Then you've got Renegades, now Renegades is very much up in the air I don't mind if they're invited if they're not when it turns out you have 24 teams yeah obviously then you'd want them invited if it had been a 10 or a 15 team league depending on who you're, who the options are I could have seen reasons not to invite them but they're a team that seem to be on the up and up they at least have some good players I think someone like JKS could probably do quite well in this league with many many games to show us how good he is against the top level players and we'll see how good he is as a player and all in all now that we know there's some very good teams there we don't have to worry about this list of names that people were unfairly invited but now we'll get to the others. So Fnatic. Now, the reason I put them top, well, it goes without saying, before all of injury, they were the best team in the world. They won six tournaments in a row. You had to have this team here anyway. I already thought if Fnatic kept winning all those tournaments and you don't have Fnatic in E-League, everyone's going to always say, yeah, oh, E-League's good and whoever won it's good, but they didn't play Fnatic. Well, now Fnatic's in it, so that question's taken out of the equation. Essentially, all the good teams are here. So that whole factor is no longer going to be a case. Obviously, you want to see Fnatic there, but interestingly enough, if all of Master can't come back for a few months, maybe Fnatic gets thrashed with Plesson. Maybe they have a lot of issues when they're playing in this league. Is Plesson actually going to America with them to play the league? All sorts of questions to be raised here, but it's good that they're there at least. They've still got fantastic players, Crims, Flusher, etc. JW. Then we go over to Na'Vi. Now, you had to have Na'Vi here because Na'Vi right now is extremely strong. Okay, sure, they've lost th uh, like three out of their last four tournaments or something. You know what? They've also been fucking incredible at some of those tournaments. They've had really, really... Ha might be three out of the last five. They, they've they been really, really good in some of those tournaments and they've placed top two in six of their last seven lands. This is a fantastic team right now. Once you get beyond Fnatic, you have to have this team here. And luckily they are here. And so as a result, we're going to get to see them play. Also, interestingly, since this league is played on LAN, now Na'Vi famously has had their issues playing online. We saw in the last two seasons of ESL Pro League, they didn't play particularly well. They didn't make the LAN finals. Doesn't matter. Oh no, they made the LAN finals in the last one. They haven't played very well this time though. And they've had some issues online in the past, particularly losing close matches. So, and they, as a result, they didn't get a CCS, if you remember. So we're now in a world where we're going to get Na'Vi there, no problem. We're going to get to see Guardian. We'll see if his wrist holds up. And we've got some fantastic players like Flamey, Seized, to watch play against all these teams. Then we've got Luminosity. Now, they're the major champions. You'd already have wanted them there anyway because they're already very consistent. But it's great that they are going to be here, especially to play against all the NA teams as well. So we'll see if there's any upset potential. Obviously, this is fantastic. Now, Envious, obviously, you're in a big slump. They still didn't really impress me that much by getting to the semi-finals of this last tournament in Malmo because of, I mean, Dean Sass kind of really fell apart in that quarterfinals. They still had a lot of issues. They did lose the Tempo Storm at the group stage, but they still have Kenny S, still have Apex, still have MBK, have Happy, some fantastic names who, if they get it together, one, like individually or as a team, they're going to be very good again. So we want to see star players like this and we want to see, do they fall apart in this league? That'll be quite interesting, right? Then we have Virtus Pro. Now, Virtus Pro... They've had this lineup, the longest of any active lineup in CSGO. They're still a fantastic team. Yeah, they're not world beaters anymore. At the moment, they're not looking like they're going to win an event, but they still have those really close series. To beat Virtus Pro in a best of three takes some big time play, and you better be very good at certain maps and under pressure especially. So it's great to see Virtus Pro there and to have someone like Snacks there who's still a very good player and to have big names like Pasha representing in the league. I think this can only do good things. And... As they work it out on LAN, well, remember it's online where their struggles have really been, if you look at it reasonably. So let's see what happens in a few months when they played on a LAN only league. Now those complaints maybe go away, or maybe they struggle on LAN and we see that as well. Then there's a scenario where you've got Dignitas. Dignitas is a great underdog team. We saw that at the Malmo, where they were obviously able to be NIP and beat Astralis. Then obviously they lost to Envious, but fair enough, it was the best of three. This is a team that has a lot of potential in it, certainly. Has some good young players. Kirby's emerging as one of the, the best players in the world, a, a standout individual player. They've got guys like Config, who has still got some potential. And MSL sets a tactical baseline that is very good. And so I'd like to see in a big tournament like this, with no excuses that we only played the top European team. Now you're going to play all the teams. What happens when you play regularly offline against some of the NA teams? Do you even do that well? Let's see in this particular case. Then we've got FaZe. Now, FaZe to me is just like a boy band of like big names from different countries. Some of them skilled players, but together they don't really do a whole lot. And it seems like they're almost there just for marketing purposes. Now, if they want to prove me other, prove me wrong, then fucking do it in the server. There's no point crying about it. So they get paid fantastically well 
but not for actually having to produce any results so far. So I, I don't like seeing a lot of amazing players essentially in some sort of mad marketing prison where they're not doing anything at the moment. Hopefully they can pick it up and turn things around. Now then, and obviously in that scenario, we're not sure what they'll be like with this new lineup, how that will work out for them. Then we've got Team Liquid. Now, Team Liquid were the team conspicuously absent from the first list because if you've already got C like C9 and CLG, you're trying to lock down the NA Elks, right? Where the fuck's T Team Liquid? So that suggested they were flirting with not playing or they had to be de dealt with still. Team Liquid's there now, obviously with no simple. It's not quite as hyped as it was. They're not the fantastic team that almost went to the final of the major, MLG Columbus. But they've still got some very good NA players. Nitro still can be very good if he gets his shit together again, as he did for a map or two. I think the game against Tai Lu, he was actually particularly good. Then you've still got Hiko, who's very consistent, a veteran, savvy guy. Elise has actually been the most improved player over the last like two months in this particular team. And so we want to see what happens when, when this team now plays, again, an American LAN league. So there's no excuses of any kind for this one. Now we've got Tai Lu. Tai Lu's all the way up here because it's just a very exciting name because of this breakout Malmo tournament they had. And they're representing Asia. So this will be really exciting because if they can play a whole league, then we're either going to know they're a flash in the pan, everyone adapts to their style, which is a very key thing to consider, by the way, because everyone will get to play them so much and watch them so much, or they'll turn out to be a legit good team and they'll start to make inroads to what Luminosity was able to do, not to the extent of winning the major, but at least becoming a team that could make the playoffs in the major, could have more upsets, could maybe win a best of three sooner or later. That would be interesting. Let's see what someone like Fancy One's like after he's played 20-odd maps. Now we'll have a, a really good sense of how good he is, or not. Likewise, Attacker. Then you go over, you got Gambit. Now Gambit looked like a really solid team. They had good tactics, small map pool admittedly. They've got some veteran players, Dosia, Adrin. Then you've got a young up and coming potential star player, Mo. Now some of the people who don't watch Gambit and haven't seen them much outside the major might think, ah, is he that good? You'll see in this league, he'll go head to head and probably beat out many of these top NA stars. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Then you've got G2, formerly Gamers 2. Admittedly, some of the sheen's been taken off this because you don't have existence there. You've got this lineup with Body in, which looked pretty bad at Malmo. And yeah, they still have some quality players. We still want to see Shox play. He's a fantastic player to this day. We still want to see what can veterans like RPK and Smiths actually do. I mean, if someone like Smiths struggles against top Europeans, you've got no excuse to be playing against NRG, Complexity, TSM, and you get your head banged in, are you? So we'll really see who's on the way in and out out of these teams. And you have to figure a French shuffle's coming sooner or later. So this could certainly exacerbate and accelerate something like that. Then you've got Flipside, F3. Now the downside is, as of the recording of this video, Bondic has left Flipside and Bondic was the best player in Flipside and the most consistent player in Flipside. Now when I say best player, really those super two points are lined up. Skill-wise, it's probably World Edit. He is a skilled AWPer and he does well against the lower level teams until he hits the top tier in Europe. But in terms of consistency and solid fragging, Bonnick was a pretty good player. So losing him's big time. Like to me, he, that guy was a soldier. So without him, Blade's going to struggle, I think, to find somebody who can replace him, be as good and have the team be as stable based on his strats. So it's a decent team. I think this is a team where you see how they, how proper European strats will work against an NA team when the skill levels are balanced up and there aren't some superstar performing players on the EU team. They're just also like decent or not that amazing players play against the NA teams. That's That's the interesting quality for me there. SK Gaming, yeah, they looked type a few months ago. Yeah, not so much now. They've still got a couple of players who have some potential, you can say, around them, but haven't quite manifested it, so you don't know if they will. For me, SK is a team where these teams like C9, CLG, Renegades, Team Liquid, you better be bashing the fuck out of a team like SK Gaming. Otherwise, don't talk as if you're some big thing. If you can't beat these flip sides, SK Gaming level teams from Europe, that aren't good themselves. Then you go over NRG. Yeah, they had the great result with a stand-in at counter pit in as much as they were able to be envious in the best of three very close maps that they won obviously and the standing did go ham for like 30 frags in the first map kind of skeptical that will happen in a league like this but of the names left if we have to fill up this many slots okay sure invite them to some degree but i also feel like a big reason why they were invited if i'm being honest is because you've obviously got shack involved now and as i mentioned in a video previously about the team when they signed when shack got involved Shaq alone tweeting or doing a video or appearing on the E-League's materials at all gives such massive exposure in contrast to some of these other names that you put in over them that it's a kind of a no-brainer for a TV league at least. This is the entertainment side of it more than the, the competition side of it. And they're a team that have some potential. Godby's obviously been a good leader for a lot of his time and maybe he can make something more of these players and make them more than some of their, more than the some of their parts. Echo Fox being included, again, as far as I can tell, is only for two reasons. One, Sean Gers. Big name, obviously, in NA still. Number two, Rick Fox. Likewise with the Shaq thing, 
he has some he has a bigger name than the league and, and then a lot of the teams and the players so that's a big reason to do it but when you actually look at the team they haven't been good online they've been quite poor some of the players have played particularly quite poor and don't look like a top pro level team okay they're supposedly they're making roster moves hasn't happened yet but i can understand to some degree why they would be brought into the league but i think this is another very tenuous one this is one's more tenuous than the nrg one by far this is actually one of the teams that aside from rick fox has the fewest reasons to be included in this league but getting to that complexity now as far as i can tell complexity is involved because for some reason they were invited along at the very first set of meetings despite not even having a roster at the time as far as i know and then having people like fraud who isn't a csgo player who's a washed up former one great 1.6 player and then a couple of people who maybe have some potential on the lineup but that's it this this team if you had to pick one to disclude from the league or to make have less slots in the league i'd kick this team out there's, there's no reason to be there their name isn't even that big complexity hasn't even big a big name in csgo ever since csgo was big so kind of irrelevant in that sense and they don't even have that huge star draw that at least some of these other teams i'm mentioning maybe have then you go to tsm i mean it's even worse there i can understand when you were making this league maybe the first meetings happened and okay they had the danish lineup then maybe you wanted them involved in then also tsm massive name over in league of legends i get all this but right now their lineup is nothing online they have a lineup it's not good and it's got a lot of issues and it's not one that's yet proven anything and so yeah very tenuous beyond the org size Optic Gaming, I mean, I can't complain about that. They did win the Road to e Vegas E-League team, which, by the way, the competition for that had teams like what's now FaZe, etc., playing in it, and those Dignitas, and those teams didn't manage to qualify for the land finals and therefore beat Optic Gaming. So Optic Gaming won the slot. I mean, you can't complain there. Yeah, they're not a good team, and they've lost Shazam, one of their best players. But, yeah, in that particular scenario, I don't think you can complain too much. Now then, what is interesting is that the main complaints are now going to be focused i imagine for most people around bad na teams getting invited now when we say that you got to say here's what people never do usually by the way whenever someone makes a list of something and you don't like that something is on a list always say two things one what would you remove from the list don't just say that alone though then say what would you add to the list don't do one or the other don't say i'd remove that and don't say who you'd add don't say i'd add this person and don't say who you'd remove because in that scenario you fucked it up completely you have to say both who you'd remove and who you'd add so the obvious ones that you'd add or remove if it was purely based on the talent of the teams is you'd remove people like complexity tsm echo fox and instead you'd probably add tempo storm obviously they had that run at Kanavice where they almost made the semi-finals you'd add maybe selfless online and na they've been performing very well ever since they lost cooster actually i haven't done much on LAN, obviously or maybe you'd invite godsend fantastic run almost made the final of you at malmo now being reasonable first of all this discussion here shouldn't have been the first discussion it would have been where's fanatic where's navi where's numerosity envious vertus pro they're all invited now so that's not a problem anymore we've got the best teams if we're being honest we've got all the best teams pretty much who gives a shit about the other teams to me the the nitpicking here is getting very very tenuous now tempo storm i'll give you tempo storm are better than a lot of these teams here on the bottom half and have a lot more potential certainly but when these relationships were being established and they were looking who could be involved with the league they were nobodies at the time they weren't in a position to be invited for this they didn't really have their run until around february march and so at that point in time and they did fail the major core fire at that point in time it, a lot of this stuff's probably already largely in place to some degree and they are more of a tenuous addition anyway so yeah in the future they certainly will be a, an, an, an omission an obvious one that should be there if they continue on the current path but it's not actually the end of the world that they were invited likewise selfless again they've only done stuff online that's it in other people's leagues we haven't really seen them online we haven't really seen them do a lot with this lineup and they certainly haven't done anything big in terms of having a star player or an org value to go over some of the orgs that i've just mentioned that you might remove otherwise now in terms of godsend yeah they have pronax they have twist they have schneider they have some good players and they've had a big result obviously they, this was all done before that big result they were in a position to do so and do we even know if they wanted to be in this league were they ever even being talked to was there ever even a possibility this lineup didn't even get anything going whatsoever they looked like total shit until dream act malmo so i think that's pretty tenuous to be going too ham over that shit now overall this is great news for the league the league has all the best teams you'd want pretty much they have a bunch of other teams as well so they all have a chance to show that they're good I think that we've got pretty much all the stars of Counter Strike here. So this gives it its best chance to succeed in terms of at least who's available on the roster. Now, if it succeeds, is entirely another matter. But at least it's got the good teams, right? 